Okay, so first thing you need to know is that you have a bounded region and you have an unbounded region. And one unbounded region means that it can go on forever in one direction. Last week we graphed one that went on forever in the left, left to right. It had a top and a bottom, but it went on forever left to right. If you notice this one right here, see how it has a bound up top on the left and on the right, but it's going to go on forever in this direction. That's unbounded. It means it's not, it doesn't have boundaries all around that, that feasible region. Okay, so here, the feasible region, it forms a triangle. So last week on Thursday and Friday, we, that's what we did. We did inequalities and then we got a feasible region and we got the vertices. What we're going to do now is we're going to take those vertices and we're going to find the maximum and the minimum point. Now, if it's bounded, it's going to have a maximum and minimum. If it is unbounded, then it's either going to have a maximum or a minimum, but it won't have both. So again, bounded will have a maximum and minimum, and unbounded will either have a max or min. Okay. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to look at number one, and we're going to graph it. Now the f of x, this one down here, negative 5x plus 2y, we're going to take our vertices once we get them and we're going to plug them into that. That is what we call um, the, that's where we find our maximum and the minimum. Okay, so you ready? You ready, Freddies? So negative 2 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 6. So let's see if I can get both of these. So I'm going to do example one. So negative two, x, negative 2 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 6. So that means we're going to have a line, a solid line at negative 2 and a solid line at 6. And we're going to shade in between those. So we're going to go to negative 2. And this is negative 2. And it's a solid line. We know it's a solid line because of that line underneath the inequality, okay? So let's go to negative 2 and let's draw a solid line. And then we're going to go to, okay, so now we're going to go to 6 on the x-axis. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And we're going to draw a solid line on the 6. And we want x to be in between there, so we know that we, we should shade lightly in between those two. So I'm just going to shade lightly. And um, because I know I want it in between those two, okay? I want x between negative 2 and negative 6. The reason I shade lightly, because if I shade too dark, right, then I won't be able to see the lines that I have to plot the points on. So I always shade really lightly so I know. Okay, now, so that was the pink. Now I have another one, which is this blue one. And I want Y, I want it to be between 1 and 5. So those are horizontal lines. So I'm going to go to Y and... They're both solid, so I'm going to go to 1, and I'm going to draw a solid line through the y-axis. Now, 
I drew the one through the one, I drew a line through one, and now I'm gonna draw a line through five. So that's one, two, three, four, five, and now I'm gonna draw a horizontal line through five, and it's gonna be solid again. because um, there's a line underneath the inequality. And we want it, we want a shade in between. We want Y to be in between there, so we're gonna shade here. And you guys, you can start to see where it's gonna intersect a little bit, right? So it's becoming a little bit darker between these two pinks and these. <laughs> Now we're gonna graph the y is less than or equal to three. And you guys, that line is gonna start at positive three and it's also gonna be solid. So we're gonna start at positive three. So one, two, three. And my slope is up one to the right one, up one to the right one. Or I can go from that three, instead of going up into the right, I can go down into the left. So let's graph that. Okay. So we're going to go up into the right and I can also go down into the left. Now we've graphed our lines. We really need to shade for this line, right? So we're going to plug in 0 for y and 0 for x. Remember, if you watched the videos last week, those that's the test point that I usually use because it's the easiest one. So I'm going to plug in 0 for y and 0 for x, and is 0 less than 3? Is that true? Yes. Yep. So I'm going to shade this way for that line. And where do they intersect? They intersect right here, correct? So let's make this the darkest part. Now, with that comes our vertices. So we have four vertices. We have one here, one here, one here, and one here. So what we need to do, so if, when you do this on the test, you guys, this would be graphing these two lines, graphing these lines, graphing this line, and getting the shaded region. That's gonna be that's gonna be a big part. Then the next part is finding the vertices, making sure that you write the correct vertices. So let's write the correct vertices. And if you're Miss Flurry, sometimes you don't write them correctly because um, you can't see the lines. So this is over one two, right? So negative two, and we went up one. So that's negative two one. So that first one right there. I'm looking at that one as negative two, one. Then this one right here, what's this vertice? One, two, over two. One, two, three, four, five. So positive two, five. Is that what everyone got? Please check because Miss Flurry has this awful habit of making mistakes. And then this one, is this one six? One, two, three, four, five, six. Six one. And then is it six five? So what I've done now is I've listed the vertices of that, that feasible region. So this is the feasible region. These are the vertices. And this would be bounded because the feasible region is bounded on all sides. If it was unbounded, then one of the sides would not have a line. Like it would, it, the, that region that we shaded, the feasible region would not be bounded on all sides. Okay, so now what we have to do is we have to take our vertices 
and plug it into this equation. So there's a lot to goes into one problem when we're doing this linear programming. So we're trying to find the maximum and the minimum. So we're gonna take, we're gonna take these points and we're gonna plug it into this equation. So let's make a little chart. That's why I left some room here. So we're going to put um, x, y here. We're gonna make a little table. We're gonna put the negative five x plus two y, and then we're gonna get our answer. So we have negative two, one. And what that means is I'm gonna put negative five times negative two plus two times one. And this is going to give me x of y. Twelve here, correct? Zero here. Negative thirty plus two should be negative twenty-eight. And negative twenty. Got it? Okay, so a couple things. This is called the um, optimization equation. That's what that's called. That optimizes your maximum and your minimum. Okay, so that's your optimized um, equation. So now our maximum is at what point? So our maximum point would be what? 12 is our maximum. So what point is that? Negative 2, 1. And our Minimum is going to be, oh, and you guys can't see it, right? So our maximum is negative 2, 1, because that gives us the largest number, 12. And our minimum is negative 28, and that point is 6, 1. Okay, so we found our vertices, so we graphed, we found our vertices, we plugged our vertices into the, the optimization um, equation, which in this case was negative 5x plus 2y, that can change. Then we found an answer, we looked at our numbers, our largest number was 12, so that ordered pair became our maximum, so the maximum occurred at that point. Um, negative 28 was our smallest number, so the minimum occurred at 6, 1. Is that good?